guys, this is Svetlana from Kamui Cosplay. Electronic Arts contacted me to create a few cool costume tutorials for their game Star Wars Battlefront 2. And as you know, I totally enjoy creating costume tutorials, so I said yes. I will bring Aiden Versio to life. She is the protagonist of the single player campaign. And in this video, I am going to show you how to build the iconic E11 Imperial Blaster out of cheap EVA foam. Keep in mind, however, that the design from the game is slightly different than from the movies. If you want to follow along, you can download a free blueprint at kamelcosplay.com. Yay! And while you're on my website, check out my advanced prop making book for more helpful tips and tricks. I also put links in the video description for all of my tools and materials. And now it's time for some crafting. Every prop starts with a blueprint. My husband Benny drew this one in Adobe Illustrator. He printed it out, taped the pages together and then cut it out. I made sure the paper dummy fit into my hand nicely. If not, I can always rescale it. My main material was high density EVA foam in 3, 5 and 10 mm. I started with a simple PVC pipe, which I marked and then shortened to the right length. Since it was still a little too thin, I applied contact cement over the whole piece and covered it in 3 mm EVA foam. Then the seam got sanded nice and smooth with my Dremel. Next up, the grip. I traced the shape several times on the foam and cut them out. Now I made some adjustments and created the next layer. To cut foam I mainly use a simple hobby knife that I keep sharp with a grinding stone. To glue the pieces together I use contact cement that I filled into handy squeeze bottles. I ended up with a total of 5 layers of foam. A Dremel with a simple sanding drum is perfect to clean up rough cuts. After that I drew a grid on the foam, cut along it with my hobby knife and opened the cuts with my heat gun. Then I rounded the edges, added some detail rivets with different Dremel tips and another foam piece on top. Next, I connected the grip to my PVC pipe from earlier. Easy peasy! This was basically how I created every single part of the blaster. Same goes for the rail on top. I cut out and glued together a few foam layers and attached it to the pipe. The magazine on the side consisted out of two parts with four layers each. I connected everything with contact cement and stuck it onto the right place. You might notice here that I had two blueprints. One for reference and one I slowly took apart. I used it even for the smallest details. Midna made sure I didn't forget anything. An X-Acto knife is pretty useful for tiny pieces. I also used a flexible shaft extension for my Dremel. It's great for precise sanding. Now I just had to glue them on. For the long rail on the bottom, I used my sanding drum to create more rivet-like details. Then I glued it on as well. Next I used my Dremel to sand a long beveled edge along a foam ring that went on the back of the blaster. a couple of more circles. Using a pointy sanding tip I was able to drill the holes into the pipe. Oh, another material I was working with was white wobbler. I cut some thin stripes, heated them up, folded them over a piece of 5mm foam, waited until they were cold again and finally glued them over the holes. For the optic side on top, I cut another PVC pipe and covered it in foam as well. I dremeled a beveled edge, added more material, placed a mount for the pipe and attached this part to the blaster. So far so good! This was day one. 
The next morning I noticed my pipe was too thin. So I made a new one and attached all the parts of my old one. Yeah, nobody's perfect. Since a few of the parts were pretty thin and fragile, I made them out of white warbler as well. Like the trigger guard for example. I just heated it up and bent it into shape. Once cold, I simply glued it to the foam. Next came a few missing details, like the rest of the optic side. As you can see, these are super simple shapes. Wobbler was perfect for this thing on the back as well. I basically just traced the patterns to the material, cut it out, punched some holes, folded it at two spots and glued it to the blaster. When creating a piece from scratch, I need to figure out the most basic shapes and then build them up slowly. This part on the side, for example, also just started with a strip of warbler. I heated it up, shaped it a bit and simply glued it on. Pretty happy so far. Finally, I had to cut out some elements at the side of the pipe. I traced my patterns with a pen, followed it with a blade and then pulled off the foam. This part wasn't supposed to be very deep, however, so I filled it back up with a 2mm piece of foam. The long deepening on the side was made the same way. I only added a few little details. One of the last elements was this front piece, which I made out of 2mm and 5mm EVA foam. Fits pretty well. Last but not least, I added all the missing details. Plenty of rivets, screws and holes, the trigger and even made little rings out of wobbler. Paying attention to details really pays off in the end. Ta-da! This was the finished foam build. I was pretty happy with the result. After some heat sealing, it was time for the paint job. First, however, Benny had to fix a few flaws and visible holes with quick seal. He just put some on his finger and smeared it over the seams. Next, I heated up a can of PlastiDip in hot tap water and sprayed a thick layer of it onto the foam. After it was dry, I added two more layers. This step made my prop more durable and gave it a great base for paint. Instead of keeping the gun just plain black, Benny applied some dark grey paint with his airbrush. It just looks more interesting this way. Additionally, he brushed on little scratches and marks with silver. This way all the details pop out really nice. And the blaster looks more weathered and real. For the last work step, I sealed his work with a thick layer of satin spray varnish. Well, and this was the finished E11 blaster from Star Wars Battlefront 2. What do you think? To me, it looks pretty close to the reference and we only spent two days building it. As you can see, it's really easy to make your own foam props from scratch. Also, the material costs were actually only 20 bucks, which I think is pretty affordable and nice. Stay tuned for the next video and the rest of the costume and let me know in the comments if you still have any questions. It would be also awesome if you subscribe to my channel and like my videos. And if not, that's okay too. So, see you next time!